This is Marcus Hollinger, and this is the 116 Live Show on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. Welcome, welcome. It's another fine week in the studio. Sir. My name is Marcus. I'm one of your co-hosts. I'm here with my good friend. Ace Harris. And this is the 116 Live on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. And we have the pleasure to hear. Ace, why don't you introduce our special yeah, guest? Yeah, I mean, this is it's a, it's, a, it's a fun day. We got someone who's um innovator, entrepreneur, businessman, man of faith, um, Roy Scott, CEO and founder of Healthy Hip Hop with us. You know, give that man a, yeah. a, little, a little welcome, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's, I know I'm, I'm excited because we were we were looking at the, the Healthy Hip Hop um, site and kind of checking yeah. out all the collateral and as art people as art hip hop people it's always refreshing when you come across something that someone is doing and you're you're like okay like right away yeah. without without diving into the details you can see the energy you can see the the intentionality you can see the the excellence excellent and yeah. what's going on For so sure. shout out to healthy hip hop shout out to what you're doing Roy and let's just let's just dive right on into it why don't you Roy give our listeners the lowdown like what is healthy hip hop absolutely well healthy hip hop is essentially hip hop for children and families so usually when you think about kids music it's a little bit watered down um ours just stays relevant with the culture with the sound the energy of hip hop and what's happening in the communities on the radio in the streets etc and so um we identified that we think we all know that hip hop is the voice of our youth a lot of the times the, the messaging is not always geared towards them or healthy for their young developing minds. So we wanted to make sure we created a positive outlet, healthy hip hop. So it's not we're not anti hip hop. We love the culture, uh, but we wanted to provide a positive alternative for kids. Yeah, that's super dope. And, and I think what's super dope is like you kind of operate, which is kind of this the, the whole premise of our of our show is like faith, culture, music. And you hit every one of those buckets like right on the head. So Super right dope to have you, man. Yeah. Um, maybe talk a little bit about. Um, I know, I know that healthy hip hop is a broad, you know, offering for the for just you know anybody. But talk a li- little bit about how faith, music, and culture plays into that. Right. So, really, the story behind healthy hip hop was I was that kid who loved hip hop, music, and culture. And uh, you know, coming up, I didn't really have a lot of guidance around me, and decided I wanted to rap right at, after of high course, school. Of course, of yeah. course, everybody, everybody's music story. Right. You on this show? <laughs> Every, I was at some point, you have done. We should, we should have like a music. listening party, for right? Everybody's yeah. everybody, right. everybody put their like latest tape or yeah. old tapes out. Right. right, exactly. So I was in the streets of Kansas City at all places, and uh, oh, 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 oh. sorry, whoa, sorry. You, whoa you, there. You, you said Kansas City, and Come you got, on. you got. I got to pause for a moment. Okay. Yes. Okay, my brother. Come on. I'm from Kansas City as well. You from KC? I am. Okay, yes, so the Chiefs, you know, we just We had did. Super Bowl. Shout out to the Chiefs, Super Bowl right. champions. Right. That just happened. We're going to get, we're going we to talk okay. Kansas okay. City, shout but out, I love shout that. Shout out my home was playing that Caleb Gordon record. He's, he's a Christian oh, hip hop fan. Absolutely. So the right. culture, the culture is live. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get back at live live family moment here. <laughs> Straight up. Sorry. I, I, but more so, you're in Kansas City, you, 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 you. Are attracted to hip hop? You starting to make music. Bring bring us yeah, into that. Yeah, so I started rapping. I actually was on the same label as Tech Nine. We were on Midwest Side oh. Records, and really, uh, it was almost like I was connected with Diamond Shields. So Diamond Shields was like the um, the master P of KC. So he was the dude that was he had the hustle money, but he was putting it into the music. Mm-hmm. So gravitated towards that. And fast forward, uh, you know, we were deep in that. We started getting some traction. Even had an opportunity like deals on the table with Sony. Uh, this is way back like two thousand one. I'm old here. I'm aging myself. But um, my light bulb moment came when I had my son, and uh, he was about three years old or so. I was picking him up from school, and I noticed him repeating my music word for word. And mm. so that music was promoting drugs, violence, wow. you know, et cetera. So I'm looking in the back seat of my guy like, no, nah, I'll turn the music off. I'm going to be raw with <laughs> your y'all. Own, your own music. It was my music, yeah. So, you know, Mac James, chop it up, click. That was, that, that's what we was riding our stuff. and. Jeez. uh so I turned it off. I even, I ain't gonna lie to you, I even had like a, I used to smoke Black and Miles, had me a Black and Miles lit. My son was in the back, my threw the cigar out the window, turned the music off. I was like, man, I can't do this no more. Whoa. And um, to get deeper, that's why I was excited to be here to kind of tell the other part of the story that I don't get into is at that moment, I knew God, but I really wasn't actively like pursuing him and trying to. Yeah. So at that moment, it was a God moment. I said, you know what? I'm done with all music. I'm just focused on like getting closer to God, getting mm. closer to my wife and my children. And that was it. I was I quit rapping. So all my homies, you know, it was like, man, what's up, bro? Like, what, you, 
what you mean you done rapping? Like, we had a pretty strong following. I was like, I'm just done. Yeah. And so just isolated myself and got deep in the word of God and um, gave up music. And as I gave it all up, I know some of the scripture talks about that. As I gave everything up, like, he actually gave it all back to mm. me. He gave me this vision of, you know, do it for the kids and do it for me in that order. And so that's when I was like, okay, that's when I started doing healthy hip hop. So it wasn't even called healthy hip hop out the gate. I was just taking like the same beats I was using to do the, what I call the goon tunes. I was doing the same beats, but it was just like ho- wheels on the bus, hokey pokey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My kids was getting crunk to it. And so that was kind of the origin story of where it started. And that's where the faith really kind of kicked in. It was like, I gave it all up to God, to, to Christ. And he, he gave me the vision back. And then he showed me it was on a global stage. And then now it's like I've been walking it out and manifesting. I was like, oh, nine. So I've been at this for quite some time and never imagined it would evolve to a tech company where we're at now. Mm. So we developed our own mobile application. Uh, we're in the VC space. We're raising capital, you know, stuff that I had no idea about. So God just kind of showed me, opened my eyes to like new worlds and different things that I can do to do it in a way that's a positive impact, but still sure. embrace the culture, still embrace what we sure. love. But yeah. just like 116, what y'all doing? Y'all doing it, you know what I mean, for the right reasons. That's that's incredible. It, it I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just having a visceral reaction because that moment that you talk about where your, your son, you're seeing the, it's one thing to talk about the impact that music and culture has on culture and on kids. And it's another thing to experience it at home mm. with right. your child. Oh, and yeah. To see, and it's it's your music, your child. Right. That's a whole, that's that's amazing that, right that you had that opportunity. And out of that, it feels like you're solving a problem that's close to the vest, but now you're kind of bringing that, bringing that to the world. I'm curious at what moment, so there's the moment when you wanted to do this where the vision was born, but at what moment did you feel you had something I really thought initially it was just with the music. So the the music is still kind of our secret sauce. We built the tech, we built all these different things around it, but it was the music. So Mm -hmm. the reception we got out the gate, because we had parents who kind of had a similar story where they're like, you know, we love hip hop, but I don't want my kids listening to this and the message. So they were like, I can actually, it created a moment where families can have, wow, like I can enjoy like hip, real hip hop culture with my kids without having to worry about any of the nonsense. And so, at that moment, that's when we knew we really had something. And once we started in Kansas City, started getting some recognition there. We did some stuff with the actually with the Chiefs, with the Royals, mm. uh, like in their community stuff that they were doing. Uh, you know, the mayor got behind us. So once we kind of got some support from the city, we yeah. were like, you know, well, okay, we're on to something special. And then it just started growing from there. Yeah, that's dope, man. I feel like, um, yeah, you you just being so, you know, having a son, do you feel like uh, had you not had a son, like would you be here like – like having a son, having the music front and center, how much did that like change your life in terms of how you see the world? Because I feel like sometimes, sometimes you know, uh, having a we both have sons. I have two. He has two. I got one on the way. So I think just hearing your story live Surprise. in front, it's just bringing it really I appreciate Congrats, it. <laughs> it's just bringing it really fresh to my to my uh, um, to my own story. So talk about how having. Not just a child, but having a son, raising men, right. makes this thing more, even more special for you. Man. Well, that's that's a great question, actually. So, I knew since I was a kid, like my dad really was active in my life. I knew him, and I still love him. I don't want to hold any judgment towards yeah. him, and we we earned all that stuff out now as a men. But he really was active in my life, so I knew like since I was like six years old, like I wanted to have my own kids. I wanted to start have keep my family unit together. Like I came up in a broken family. And specifically, I always wanted a son, so um, <clears throat> just so I can provide for him what I always wanted. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna give sure. him what I wanted as a as a young man. You knew that that young. You yeah. At six, I knew that. Oh, wow. And so, but I still was I was lost for a long time. And then, uh, but when I had him, it was like okay, I have something greater to live for. And I was mm-hmm. like, I actually loved him more than I love you know, I was like I'm putting him above everything you know, at that point and that was another story even about into my spiritual journey where God was even showing me like how I was actually loving my son more than I love God and I had to rearrange that to, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying oh so, wow right. talk, wow talk, talk, yeah talk a that's a, about, that's a I, I would love to hear about that I mean yeah so I was I was making sure everything I was doing my best to make sure everything I was doing was just grounded in the word like I was doing for getting the scriptures myself and making sure like my life was aligning with it. And so it was a scripture that says I might butcher it, but it was like, if you love, you know, any of these above me, like you're not, you're not worthy of me. Right. And so 
I was thinking about that. And I was just honest. I'd be straight honest with God. I'm like, God, you know what? I love my son more than you right now. I ain't going to lie to you. And then, yeah. and then as I got closer to him, he shifted and showed me like, well, he's the source of, you know what I mean? Like, I don't get my son without the source. You yeah. know what I mean? God without the father, yeah. without, through Christ. And so it shifted my um, my perspective, my dynamic of like, okay, God, he's he's comes above all things, and God now my my wife and then my kids because that was a whole we didn't get into that one. Yeah, that was, yeah. here's a whole, whole different yeah, line, right? Because I was really it was like my son above everything. So fast forward, I, he he helped me reprioritize, like you know, God, my wife, then my children. Gotcha. But at that time, it's beautiful. My son was my top priority, and uh, seeing him repeat my music, I was reflecting on me as a kid and how like hip hop moved me. Like in Kansas City, like we was, yeah. you know, we like underground Bay Area. So oh, yeah. we was in yep. the Mac, yep. Mac Dre era. Uh, so my name Mac. was Mac James. Like I was, some of us off of Mac yep. Dre. I thought we was Max. Yeah, Mac Yuck Dre. Mouth, was, all that. Yeah, Bay Area. Yuck Mouth. Take it back. That, oh, oh, yeah. Back. Nah, it's, side yeah. note, it's funny how hip hop is like that because Kansas City is, I always tell people, we might as well be from Oakland. Right. Because that's the, <laughs> that's the, 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 it's, the Bay Area. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the export. It's the, it's the, it's the outpost of the Bay Area. The whole Northern Cali. So you like Brother Lynch hung. Yeah, all that. That stuff was wicked if you look back on it for oh, real. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I grew up in that and it had me wanting to be do be that and be in yep. some of those circles, do this, some of those things, which was and so seeing my son do that, that's why I was like, you know what? That was you're right, that was my God moment. I, for if it wasn't for him, no, nah, I wouldn't have that just changed my whole perspective. Like, nah, I can't be this kind of influence on him or anybody else. And so that's why I said I'm just done with music all over. Like, I'm just done. Mm. And just was really leaning in with my wife and children and leaning in with God. I think that's super dope because like sometimes obviously we're, we're going to get more into like the actual you know the tech story and all that stuff is important the business and the, and the culture piece but just the faith um, launch pad is so in interesting to me because I feel like sometimes when you're having a faith moment um, people kind of uh, have a have a transformation moment and kind of in an innocent way we end up trading one idol for another. Right. And it's like and, and so and you, and in fact you had to kind of reel it back and still see like all right had the son, but that was a blessing, but it wasn't to be, you know, um, put on his pedestal. Right. But the, the fact that you had a son kind of put that seed in you to do something great and to use the talent that you have for music for something great and just, and just uh, you know, use it for something wise and some, something special, man. So, Absolutely. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. yeah. And my, my heart is, is definitely resonating with this. It's growing up, same city, same streets. My dad was, wasn't the most talkative man, but we spent a lot of time in the car together and my pops wrote raps. He rapped, loved rap music, all those artists that we just talked about, found out about them. And I just remember as a kid, the first time I felt like my dad saw me was when he turned to me and told me to freestyle. Wow. Then I was like, what? And I wanted to because he was always doing it. And, and, I, and I was scared. And he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to judge you for what you say. I just want to hear you rap. And I did it. And over the years, that, that those interactions w were became kind of central to our relationship. It's probably like the, yeah. the thing that I can look back and say, that's what we shared. And to hear your story and to see that full circle, the family and, and even the faith context and how you've kind of taken that connection and built something, I think is truly special. Very unexpected route yeah. for us to start this conversation <laughs> off talking about family interestingly right. enough yeah but that's i'm i'm i let's say i'm experiencing joy right now yeah. hearing that yeah. full circle moment and, and what you're doing to to bless families straight up yeah. i might know your pops you know? yeah we're gonna tie yeah we're gonna <laughs> that to say, cause kansas city is a very small city all right watch we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into that uh we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break and do some 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 family geography yeah. research to see how deep these connections right. go but if you're just joining us this is the 116 life i am one of your co-hosts marcus hollander i'm here with my good friend Ace Harris. And we're joined in studio today by Roy Scott, CEO and founder of Healthy Hip Hop. We're going to take a quick break. Here's some amazing kingdom building music, the kind that you can only find on Sirius XM Channel 154. Keep it locked. It's Holy Culture Radio. All right, so welcome back. If you're just joining us, and if it's your first time joining us, my name is Marcus. I'm one of your co-hosts for the 116 Life, and I'm here with my good friend. Ace Harris. And we're joined in studio by Roy Scott, CEO and founder of Healthy Hip Hop. 
And we've been talking about the genesis of healthy hip hop, which is a, a hip hop solution for families and for kids. And we had an opportunity to hear the family story that birthed yeah. this, this tech app, this music program that's, that's serving families. Beautiful story. And where we wanted to start to kind of shape the conversation now is to talk a little bit more about the operational experience. So, so much of when we think about music entrepreneurs, mm, yeah. I don't know if this is just me, but sometimes it can feel like we usually have culture to offer. Right. But the operational excellence to actually turn something into a fully functioning business can sometimes be lacking, and, and especially when you layer over the faith component. So I want to hear a bit, Roy, maybe you could bring us into the moment where you've got you got some traction around the city playing the records. You kind of, you, you alluded a bit, but I, I'd love to hear, when did the business go tech? Yeah, the business went tech. Uh, it was probably around like 2019, 2018, okay. 2019. So that was, we was a good 10 years in. So okay. we, we kicked things off around 2009, 2010. And the business model kind of evolved. And what we started where I knew music, right? So again, I'm aging myself. So at that time, like, you know, we flipping CDs. That was my whole hustle. Oh, yeah. And I was out the trunk of my car, you know, in case you mentioned Mr. Factor and them guys, and them guys I would hustle my CDs with. Yep. And so... I knew that out the gate. I'm like, if I purchase a thousand CDs for a thousand dollars, you know, I'm gonna sell them on average seven dollars a pop. I make seven grand off this batch. You know, I'm a, so that was kind of my hustle there. So it started with that, uh, but then the live events really picked up. Okay. But it was more like for schools, oh, for okay. birthday. Okay. We was doing everything gotcha. at that point. Birthday parties. Oh, they were wow. booking us to come out performing and like what? what? Yeah. So we were doing. So at the at the time, uh, my business partner, he was actually a magician. Uh, we had we were doing music, <laughs> right? We were That's doing, crazy. We were doing music and magic, right? And so we would do the music and magic shows. He knew a lot about the side of like children's entertainment because he had been doing it quite a while in okay. Baltimore. Gotcha. gotcha. And then he moved to Kansas City. So I connected with him, and we started doing shows. We were doing like like 250 shows a year. Oh, y'all were. Wow. Real. I'm talking about. Y'all was, y'all was a, uh, like an operating business. Hey, bro. And this is all word of mouth too. So we're talking about some Fridays and Saturdays, we got four, five shows a day. It's like 10, noon, one, three, five. Like we pulling up, set up, jam, and we'll get to the next one. So I started learning that side. of like, okay, well, here's how we're performing to make money. But even doing that, I was like, you know, at that time I was still, I was just about hitting 30. I'm 41 now. Um, I still was like, we can do this to make money, but how are we going to scale this? I can't be pulling up to doing everybody. I, I got my own family and stuff. That's like facts. I'm pulling up doing um, quite a few shows. Yeah. And so that's when we started developing a curriculum around the music. So the first curriculum was called Eat, Write, and Exercise. And so it was basically an exercise program for schools. Right. And so now we seen, once we built it out, connected with some educators, started testing it. So, okay, now this is a program we could license with schools. And so we did our first license and it was like five grand for just for one school. You know, so now, bam, we like, we can repeat this process. Mm. This is how we can start, you know, generating more revenue and also furthering our impact and actually now taking it further from just the music. Now we're educating the kids, right? Yeah. Through, through the music. And so that's where it started with that. And then fast forward, we did that quite a bit. And then I, I was, I'm at, I'm at the age where I was on the cutting edge of all technology. So I'm like, when video games first start coming out, okay. Nintendo, I was yeah. part of that. Like when cell phones, the first G1 like joint, you know what I mean? Before I, iPhone was even a thing. Like, so I always was in, in like, like just, uh, not, I won't say infatuated, but I was just like curious about tech. I'm like, right. this is like, I'm seeing how it was taking place. And any business that was really scaling up, they had some type of innovative software. So if you're talking about the, Restaurant industry, now you're looking like DoorDash or, mm -hmm. you know, Uber Eats. Same in the automotive industry was Uber, you know, Lyft, Turo. I mean, you go on down the list. Uh, the film industry is Netflix, Hulu. So whoever was creating this innovative software, they were scaling their businesses. And so I started doing my research on that. And then that's when we made the pivot to the tech space and said, okay, now we can not only be in like 100 schools, we can be in thousands of schools. Wow. Do the technology. Yeah. That's amazing. What 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 led you to like? W did you consider yourself a techie, and what planted the seed for you to be so interested and consumed by tech? I mean, like what? Yeah, what was the building blocks for yeah. you to kind of have that instinct? I would kind of consider myself a tech. I would just as always like just 
I was, it was just interesting to me. I was like from the new phones that came out to like different ways. Like, cause I said, we, you know, yeah. I think if we about the same age, we a little bit younger than me, but like we got to see it all from the beginning. Like yeah. Yeah. phones, apps, like, like I yeah. saw, I'm watching it grow and I was just always like, man, this is dope. So I wanted to be a part of that. So uh, I guess you can consider myself a techie, but I'm what they call non-technical. So I didn't know how to develop gotcha. our code. Mm. So I can do like some basic stuff, but I'm not, I don't mm. know how to actual code. And so, I was already interested in it, but then on the business side, what really pushed me all the way was another important part of our story about faith and um, and just how tough this entrepreneurial stuff is. Yeah. You know, we had got selected to pitch on Shark Tank, season seven of Shark Tank. This is about 2015. And wow. so uh, so we started in 2010 or so. So about five years in, we get selected to go to Shark Tank, right? So we like, man, this is our moment. We finna be on. Because even more important than the deal is the national exposure. Yeah. And so, fast forward, me and my guy at the time, it was the, oh my guy, Reggie Reg, the magic man. And uh, this dude was like, we, we come to perform it. Like, this dude was like the, how can I say it? Uh, he's like the, kind of like the Eddie Murphy for kids. His big personality just was silly Kills with it. it. Yeah. yeah, it was just really entertaining. And all for kids. And so, we went and filmed the, the Shark Tank episode, closed the deal with Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful. I don't know if y'all know the show or not. That. Okay, wow. But he's one of the hardest sharks to close. And you wouldn't think, like, oh, Kevin O'Leary finna invest in healthy hip hop. But he had been in the education space, or Oregon Trail, which is like one of the first. Uh, yeah, I remember oh, he Oregon, did Trail. Oregon Trail. That was one of the first computer games. That was his. Oh, uh, what? Wow. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Dysentery. Yeah. Shout out to all them oxen. <laughs> them oxen you had bro. to take care of, you man. Feel me? Uh, Between that thing, clicking yo, that thing, moving up. The yes, thing, sir. Bro. Trying to put to get down the Missouri River, bro. <laughs> yeah, all that, all that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. How we was even on the cut edge of that. That that was you know, saying, right. We was <laughs> ones who playing that. So he, that was his property. Uh, Carmen San Diego was his. He also that was. That's one no of his idea. properties. Yeah. And uh, he actually sold, he had like a whole tech company that was for educational software. And he knew the founders of the Wiggles. It was a group, uh, it was like a kind of a, kind of like a Yo Gabba Gabba, but before them, yeah, they, they yeah. were in the Australia the side. Yeah. So fast forward, he knew all them, was like, you know, he gave us a deal. At the time, it was a, a half a million dollar deal, 500000 for 50% of just our kids' TV show. At that time, we had a different like business model. Yeah. And one of the things was like the um, our kids' television show, uh, the, uh, the, um, the intellectual property behind that. And so did the deal. We like, we, once this thing airs, we own. And yeah. so that was September of 2015. And I'm a numbers guy too, so I'm going to tell you how this all sure. ties in and about faith. So that was September 2015. Six months go by, they're like, we're going to let you know when it's going to air. We'll give you two-week notice. We're going to throw this big watch party in Kansas City, you know, at the Kaufman Foundation. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, Shout they, out to the Kaufman family. Right, because they were doing uh, the One Million Cups at this time. It was like a pitch thing for entrepreneurs. So fast forward, six months go by. I get a call, March 16th, 316, right? Yeah. And John 316, get the call, and it's them. And they're like, hey, Roy, I want you to know you guys did an incredible job, but unfortunately your episode's not going to air. I'm talking my heart fell to my foot, fam. I'm like, oh. I'm like, what you mean? They go, like, oh, well, the slots got full. It kind of gave me some crap. And so uh, I emailed Alex Kenji. He's the CEO of O'Leary Ventures. And that's, you know, who we started our due diligence with. And he's like, listen, Roy, you know, can I talk to you guys off the record? And I'm like, of course. He's like, well, you guys got screwed, except you used a little bit harsher language. I'm like, what you mean? He's like, well, ABC, the network that Shark Tank comes on, is owned by Disney. And they looked at your children's programming as competition. Oh. Yeah. So welcome to Hollywood. Oh, is what I was told. Wow. so basically, so you had a great product, a great brand, so good, best, so good, so good. Raised half a million dollars in capital, and because it was going to air on a competing network, you got the rug got pulled under your feet. Rug got pulled on us, man. And I'm, get, but the deal, the deal, the deal was done. So we, even the deal, did, the half a million. Did was, the check clear? The half a million was thrown in the trash can. Everything was thrown oh. in the trash. Yeah. So we didn't get the deal. Because the deal was facilitated through Shark Tank. Wow. So and how, so now, God. wow, what happens next? So this is what inspired the tech. So at that time, so I'm not going to lie to you. So, you know, like I said, got the call oh. on 316. I'm talking about, so I'm 6'3". I felt three set like a midget, bro. I was about this tall. Mm. You know, I was, I was like, because I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, gonna, I'm smashed. I got smashed up. And so uh, I was like, praying and God was like you trust me I was like, yeah he's like keep going I was like alright I don't know what that looked like but alright <laughs> come on <laughs> and so at that point that's when I was looking at the text I'm like how do we like we had something special but I realized that we just didn't really have 
a strong business model. You know what I'm mm. saying? And so uh, I was like, how am I going to get this? How are we going to get this there? So that's when I got in the trenches of all the entrepreneurial resources that Kansas City had to offer. And that's when we made the pivot to us doing the, just the live shows and the curriculum to now creating the online platform and the mobile application. But again, I'm not a developer. So what, so I went through a couple programs, uh, Launch KC, which we got a $50,000 grant from them to develop the early stages of our tech. Uh, we got Digital Sandbox. These are all Kansas City programs. Um, we got the Rainier Institute Challenge. So there are a handful of these grants that I was doing my research that were for entrepreneurs, for early stage entrepreneurs to help you develop like these early phases to get you what they call VC venture capital ready. It's yeah. so all this stuff. I had no idea. I didn't know what none mm-hmm. of this was. So, but going through them programs, I learned, okay, here's how we're going to build out our tech. Here's what our product is. Here's how we're going to su- pitch this thing successfully. Of course, I was telling a story about how Shark Tank just basically took a dump on us and like how we got something special, but now we got to had to pivot. So it's telling the story, getting the, the, the assets in, in line, like your pitch decks, your executive summaries, yeah. like, Financial projections, like all this stuff that I didn't. Yeah. So basically, big boy the, stuff. The it made me learn all, that, all yeah. this. So I had to learn it, and then yeah. So basically, that's what when the pivot to the tech came, and that's when I went through them programs in KC. Went through them, like I said, got about collectively about 150k in grants. So the grants is the, what they call the non dilutive money. So with grants is no strings attached. Yeah, it's just the money, and and I was doing my best to be a good steward with that money sure. to like yeah. build it and show. Hey, look. Then I ended up getting my first investors. And so fast forward was able to, from them, that was like, that happened in 2017, really built the actual first, like, what we call the first MVP, like 2018, 2019. MVP, what's, what's, uh, 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 minimal, minimal viable product. Okay. So like. Can you talk, let's, let's, cause we, okay. we, we like, we like to, we like yeah, to get a little, right. we like to get a little SAT on this show. Can you, there's a couple things for the journey I want to call out. You said we realized that we didn't have a, a, your business structure can you maybe say really maybe even briefly what led you to realize that there was there were some structural issues within the business both bef- bef- after the shark take thing you realized okay we got to shore up some things in our business what 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 led you how, how did you come to that conclusion well i think it was just being flat out honest with myself and just what you just said is like a lot of the times in, in music and in, in the culture like the culture that we had to offer but we don't have no strong business behind it right so i was just being brutally honest with myself and i was just looking at all the factors of how are we going to build a legitimate business it can't be just because you guys got something special you know i mean so we got something special but how do we actually put the structure behind it stuff that i knew nothing about yeah and so that's that was kind of the just me being brutally honest with myself and saying this just identifying my weaknesses and the flaws and what i needed to fix and then going out seeking the help you know what I'm saying? Mm. So and I went out and sought the help and then people really started getting behind us. And and then again from that point, around twenty nineteen, um, to now we've raised about one point three million. Wow. You know, collectively. Congratulations. Uh, appreciate man. it, man. It's been a long journey, especially for what we're doing too, because when you talk about the tech space, we're in the tech space, but we also have like a strong content and music play. Yeah. So a lot of time we talk about the tech folks, they like, you know, what I mean, this this ain't necessarily in their wheelhouse. So it's been a, a, a extra layers and more challenges to the journey. But if you look at that full circle, that's how we even got here. It's crazy because even like when I first met and connected with Lecrae and how I'm here now with you amazing brothers for what the, for this uh, podcast is when I first actually got out of the streets, take it back to the first story, when, when I first got out of the streets and got me a gig at Blue Cross Blue Shield at KC. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Do, uh, and my desk was like, man, you got to listen to this. And it was a burnt disc. I told Lecrae to start. It was a burnt disc and it was Lecrae. You know what I'm saying? It was like, and that was my first time hearing like somebody rap about God that was actually it was sounded dope. You know what I'm saying? Was, I think he said something I keep reading Ephesians. I was along one of them joints. This is way back. And um how it came full circle for me. That was my first like getting out of the streets, trying to start this new thing, and then to now one of our biggest investors, Collab Capital, how we connected and brought Lecrae on as a growth partner. Yeah. And look how it came, you know, full circle. And now I'm right here. And it's all about time and just being patient. Cause a lot of the time I'm like, man, I know what it is. God showed me what it is. I'm like, I know it's gonna be this. Like, what's up? I'm mean, I was just praying this morning. I'm like, God, what's up? I'm still facing some adversity. And he's like, be patient, young man. Like, keep walking it out, and I got you. And so now, full circle. Now I'm here with two legends. Cause I did my research on both of y'all. Hey, we you know we've been rocking for. As a matter of fact, when I first time met Lecrae, you was here at the studio. And now I'm working. You know what I'm saying? Working with the best. That's and amazing, like, man. all comes for a full circle, man. You gotta keep the faith strong. That's amazing, man. And I, I want to, I know that there's there's more here, but if you're just tuning in, we're sitting in with Roy Scott, CEO and founder of Healthy Hip Hop, 
And we just heard the amazing story of how a $500,000 investment and a national TV spot was pulled underneath, off from underneath Mm. the team. And through perseverance and diligence and faith in God, now that's led to a million plus in investment for the business national scale. And we want to hear more about this story. But first, we're going to take a quick break to hear some kingdom building music. Some, and, I, and I feel like now's a good time to play Lecrae's Journey because I feel right. like man. that song, just, just run that song back. Yeah. But yeah, just I'm, I'm probably going to go listen to that later on. Yeah, just, so keep it locked. It's yeah. the 116 Life with Marcus and Ace on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. Five. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the 116 Life. I'm one of your co-hosts, Marcus, and I'm joined by my good friend, Ace Harris. And... We've had the opportunity so far to sit in with Roy Scott, CEO and founder of Healthy Hip Hop. And so far, we've covered an amazing journey that started with his son hearing his music and him recognizing right away that he needed to provide a healthier option for his child to then going on and building a solution for children and schools to encountering a $500,000 investment and TV deal they got snatched away, to Mm. sticking with it, staying with it, now being at a point where the company has raised over a million dollars in funding and they're operating on a national level. Roy, again, a a tremendous story. Switch your background from, from being in the streets, making music, to now running a tech company. I'd love to know... Now, what what's been a recent moment that is because if, if if you're running a business anyone knows this there's all at new level new devils is what Andy Minio says so I'd love to hear a recent moment of encouragement or or that let you know like okay there's still more here right yeah well so we ended closed the year out pretty strong and started the new year with a couple of good events. And it's been a lot of challenges too. So like you said, there is like the new levels, new devils, but when you do get some of these wins, it continues you know, to validate, like, okay, you know, I'm on the right track and God is with us. So um, to end last year, we were a part of the black ambition program. So that's a mm-hmm. entrepreneurial program led by Pharrell Williams. And so they start out with like 2000 applicants. They narrow it down to 200 applicants and then out of those 200, you automatically get in the programming. So you get like the mentorship, the advisory, access to different events and stuff like that. But then from that 200, they cut it down to 50. And out of that 50, 30 get an investment. And so fast forward, we got in the program. We get the, made that two, last 200. But we didn't make the last 50 for the investment. And so, again, between me and you, like, I, I was a little disappointed. Like, I'm like, hey, bro, like, this is everything we do for, like, like you said, the culture and even faith, because I know the, you know, for them, they're, they're men and women of faith. And so I was like, we were such a good fit for this. I had a choice at that time to like, you know what? I'm good on this or like I'm going to lean in. And so I decided I'm going to lean in and go above and beyond because that's mm-hmm. always what kind of has got me to the next level. It was just still going above and beyond even when I didn't want to. And so I leaned in, went through the programming, and they had an event um, for the – they had like this uh, – big event, the uh, Mighty Heroes event in Norfolk, Virginia. And it was part of the Black Ambition program. And they were doing a pull-up and pitch competition. So when it comes to pitches, like, that's something I love to do. It's almost like how, again, the music and culture ties oh, over. Okay. Like, yeah, I yeah. rap. I'm on stage. Oh, like, yeah. You're going to get it, yeah. So now, I, you know, I do it in a way where I just tell my story in a compelling way. And I bring it. Matter of fact, I wore this. Matter of fact, I wore this outfit on uh, the same one when I uh, pitched for the pull-up and pitch. So, it was an event one day. I was like, you know, I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to fly into, flew into Norfolk ah, that morning. Crazy. And so I'm going to just pull up, man, and pull up and pitch, right? And so flew in. At this point, and keep in mind, like I said, I didn't didn't get the investment from the other stuff. I said, I'm just going to fly in and see what I can do. Went to the event, and they had the pull up and pitch competition. So there was probably about 60 businesses pitching, and you get 60 seconds. And so there was more people with like to start that were pitching than was even in the crowd because we had got there a little early. And they were picking the first seven to go on to do the three-minute pitch, which would then you would qualify, you would get the money. And so I'm like, dang, I was like halfway through the pack, right? And let me show you how God was working. So I was probably about 25th in line or so. 
Right before I went, they had already picked the seventh person. Ah. So I'm like, it's cool. So I get up on stage, I do my pitch, and and there was three judges. You had to get three three uh, green thumbs up to go to the next level. So I'm like, seven had already got picked, but they, they had a couple more pitches. So I went up about, like I said, 25th or so in line, did my pitch, and they were all looking like, we going to give them the – so they gave me the three green thumbs up. So they moved from seven to eight yeah. for me. And they was like, all right, we're done with – room for you. And I was the last one. They were like, we're done with the pitches. They were done. We got the final eight. So first of all, I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, I get God's favor just showing up in you know, faith. And he got me in there, right? So fast forward, we did the three-minute pitch. And so I did a three-minute pitch. They would give three checks. There was a $20,000 check, um, a 10 and a five, I believe. And so did the pitch and uh, – End up winning it, winning the twenty bands, and the thing about that twenty, it was a, a still non dilutive, so this was like a grant, so there was no strings attached to this money, uh, so I got the twenty thousand dollar investment, and then Pharrell Williams came as a special guest at the end, like, it was a surprise, and so I got to meet Pharrell, dap up with him, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I got, the, I got the pictures and everything, like you know what I'm saying? Well, he handed me the check, and we chopped. He's like, man, I love what you're doing, like let's keep the conversation going. And so uh, Felicia Hatcher, who is the his like right hand woman in the tech space. She's in Miami. Uh, after that, I went down to the uh, Art Basel, connected with her, so connected with a team, and pretty much, you know, got was able to bring Pharrell on as advisor. You know what I mean, and get them on board with what we're doing mm. and Black and So it was that, and so again to get that kind of what I'm doing now is we built the team, we built the product, we got everything going, but we want to get key stakeholders in hip hop. Yeah, you know, to really get behind it. Smart. So that's why you're talking about Lecrae. You know, you're yeah. talking about Pharrell. Yeah, and then um. Fast forward, we got selected again for another pitch competition because I, you know, the pitching is like, especially it must be real, especially for like black founders and women founders. Like it's there's it's more levels, it's more challenging to get the money. That's why the numbers show like black founders got like one percent, less than one percent of VC. And if you talk about women founders, that goes down even more. Wow. And so, uh, and there's hundreds of billions of money, dollars out there, but they, they just make it a little more challenging. So, all the pitch competitions provide opportunities to get in front of VC to get, you know, more exposure for what you're doing. So the Legacy Classic, this was actually a few weeks ago, the Legacy Classic, um, we got selected to pitch. It was two two entrepreneurs. I actually knew the other brother too, real solid dude. Uh, my guy Khalil with um, uh, Trackflow. It's like a, he, he's in New York City. It's a tech company for like real estate. Yeah. The, all the, the deal flow. Yeah. And uh, so pitch ended up winning that, but the thing was Michael B. Jordan was there for that, so I got to meet Michael B. Pitch in front of him, you know what I mean? You know, he getting ready for the Creed stuff, and yeah, and then Michael B. I, he was just a real solid brother. Like we chopped it up, and um, I was telling him, you know, usually because the Creed three finna come, out, I was like, you know, when you get to that third one, like in a, in a uh, you know in a franchise, it start going downhill. I was like, but I ah. seen, but I seen the uh, trailer. Yeah, the trailer look official. I'm yeah, like, yeah, they got Jonathan Majors in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote, like he wrote and produced. Yeah. Right, he wrote and produced it. I was like, bro, you did your thing on that. You know? So yeah. we chopped it up, did the pitch, won it, and then they were doing the Legacy Classic is a basketball game of HBCUs uh, in in uh, New York. This is in New Jersey, so on the other side, and uh, so yeah, so basically. Uh, Won the competition. They announced it. I'm on the court, mid court with Michael B. He hand me a hand me the basketball. And I and show y'all how cold God is. I love basketball. Yeah. I used to hoop. You know that was part of my thing too. Oh, yeah. like, yep. We all we all hoop. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'm talking day. about hey, before Steph was around. You know what I'm saying? Light skin from three family. That Let's was, go. Ah, Let's that go. was me. You Let's understand? Go. But, <laughs> <laughs> so I love the games. And, yeah. and so just how I was able to be right. st- stand center court. You know what I mean? Uh, with Michael B. Jordan. Handed me the basketball, but now I have him as an advisor. Um, three firms, it's a collab capital. And we talked a little bit offline about Jewel. Jewel was there. Um, Mac Ventures, Concrete Rose. These are all uh, also black led VC. Yeah. So that was all there. So now I'm kind of building on that momentum to now, you know, I'm, I'm raising a C round right now. So I'm raising some funding right now. And so just kind of building on the momentum of, you know, the team is strong, the product is strong, the content is strong. And now we got key stakeholders in hip-hop and entertainment really getting behind healthy yeah. hip-hop and show that this is something that's, that's valid and i want to i want to ask that because i want to ask a little bit about that because we all also share you know the 116 life is a program about faith business music business and culture and maybe just kind of dipping into the faith bucket a bit how are you can you maybe tell us about a moment as you're processing your faith as you're interfacing with these individuals whose platforms are 
uh, publicly different or publicly maybe even ambiguous on the faith side, how how are you kind of navigating these big wins and this business success currently with the with the faith faith lens? Right. Well, to me, it's ultimately it's just I've been leaning into just the word, trying to like I come we mentioned early, just making sure that the things I'm doing is standing on this, and I'm not I'm not bending who I am like for any person or any opportunity. Yeah. You know right. I'm just this is not happening. So going into these things, I've been very prayerful matter of fact i'm glad what you did even before we kicked this off you don't mind me sharing like before we kicked this off we kicked it off in prayer like, yeah which is to me that's dope like that type of culture so that's how i pretty much even go into what i'm doing like i'm going into an intentionally with prayer like god let, let, let you be the one who leads the way right and yeah. so he's been aligning me with the right people so even like you know michael b he's a man of faith you know he may do secular movies stuff actually think about the movies he's done most of the stuff been pretty clean cut yeah you know what i mean uh um hasn't really done anything but e either way like I've been praying for God till I'm with the right people. Even like Pharrell, like Pharrell, even though he's like a he well respected in hip hop, he done stuff. But yeah. for the most part, like Pharrell is kind of like a clean cut cat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he had the happy joint for yep. the yeah, minions. Yeah. Like yep. so, uh, <laughs> I love it. Deep, deep in his catalog, he, he has a song explicitly about Jesus. Yes. I'm, right. a big, I'm a big yeah, Pharrell fan. It is you're the greatest. Yeah, he does. And <laughs> right. he also did that Netflix um, documentary with that his gospel choir from back yeah. home in Virginia. So he he definitely I feel like has a faith background. Jesus and, is my daddy, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm like, yo, yeah, for real, this is funny. I might have to flip that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> is, yeah, yeah. Hey, so maybe we can, to maybe we can joy, do a bro. flip it and bring that through. And I I want to I, I asked that question intentionally because especially you know we share uh, and we've been talking about this offline a bit. We share a few points of connections, being from the same city, having gone to the same school. Now we're sitting in the same room in the same couch. And I just want to take this opportunity. You know, if you are, if you're listening to this program and you come, and you, it, it, you know, it's not about where you're from and it's, it's about where you're headed. You know, a lot of times yeah. we can, and, and what scripture constantly encourage us is to don't despise the days of small beginning. Man, I so, I so see these out the trunk in Grandview at the gas station <laughs> off Blue Ridge myself. Sure. And I would have never imagined that it could lead to something like this. And it's so special to sit here with someone who shares that same journey and to be able to put that back out to people. Even as a believer, you know, if you have a vision you that, that you feel God has given you and, you know, it may look unconventional, right? You, you may be in a room full of rappers and that may not, and you, you there, but that may not be your thing. You might have something different. It's okay to, to stick with that or you or the journey may get tricky and you might have to kind of to what you said about going into meetings and being in the word and praying. It's it's ambiguous, right? Right. But to but but what I hear is that you're persevering and you're staying encouraged. And I just I just wanted to take a quick second just to call that out and, and give that as encouragement yeah. to our listeners. You know, that great things are possible. And, and you may have to go through some hard things. You may have to mm -hmm. pray some difficult prayers and, and make some difficult decisions. All right. Yeah. And well, yeah. I, I, you know, ain't no may to it. You gonna have your know I mean. You're, like, you're going yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> you get, if you're going for something like, and especially like that, God is calling you. Do you're gonna face a lot of adversity. And I think from my experience, even like we talked about, like some of my family and friends who I try to encourage and on their journey, like. A lot of people, once they face that adversity, they, they fold it up. Yep. I mean, so, but the greater things are on the other side of that. So, absolutely, it's been, like, really, like, not bending on my yeah. faith and being patient and, like, allowing God's timing. Yeah. You know, we talked about that also. Like, absolutely. I've been so, in my mind, I'm like, I know what it is. Like, God, show me what it is. <laughs> it's now. Like, yeah. it's my money. I want it now. Yeah. Like, yeah. God's like, hold on, family. Like, hold this on. This ain't J.G. Wentworth. You right? me? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it was dope. You know? I think it was dope, too, man. Two things that stuck out to me in your story here and the whole, you know, the, I know it's probably, it's, it's probably even more details that they can't, can't even fit in this segment, but um, one was your ability to kind of persevere after the uh, Shark Tank situation, which is like, man, that's a big leap of faith. But then number two, which is really practical, this is really shout out to all my music creatives, entrepreneurs, especially my music community. People are always pursuing, pushing something. You took your own money, flew to Virginia. Yes, sir. And to do a pitch. Yes, sir. When nobody invited you and got in line and basically freestyled <laughs> to win a competition. I think we need to just pause and stop and just remind. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's the kind of hustle and mindset. I mean, 
obviously the culture may call it betting on yourself. I look at it like it's just believing in God. Yeah, and it's, it's having some. We we were talking about this on Monday uh, with our we do a spiritual nugget every week to kick it off, and we were talking about Jesus and the five loaves, and it's like the disciples still had to give him something to work with. Right. And so much in this entrepreneurial journey, we 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 can't we can't overlook that that you know god jesus there had to be some water for him to turn into wine right, right? there had yeah. to be some fish and some loaves so really quickly i was i was curious to hear this roy have you so your journey started with the story can you think of any or are there any user stories of impact that you've heard of of, of how how healthy hip-hop is is impacting families yeah for sure so more on the school side so on the family side i have a lot of just people that I grew up with and also people that were reaching out were saying like, thank you for, you know, providing an opportunity for, to have like a clean hip hop experience with my family. And there's actually, and I don't know we didn't get a, last, a chance to talk about a lot, but there's other players in the space now. So you may have heard like Gracie's Corner, mm -hmm. there's a, a, the Jules TV. These are the people that we work with too, that are doing some dope hip hop for kids now. You know, there's, even though we started a long time ago, but there's folks now in this space that's really dope. But as far as on the educational side, one thing that really hit me when we started going to educational conferences, we connected with uh, the sister, Dr. Sarah Burns, and she's in, in Chicago Public Schools. And, you know, south side of Chicago, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. And she was like, well, you know, uh, when my kids were coming in to get ready for school, you know, to get, get them engaged in our lesson plan, it was taking me, like, seven, eight, ten minutes to get them, like, settled in, focused. Once we started using healthy hip hop to start our day in the morning, I got that down to 45 seconds. Wow. So, because our highest use case is where teachers use healthy hip hop in the classroom for like morning energizers. So they'll stand up next to their desk, they'll dance, they'll do like hip hop music and movement. Mm -hmm. Because, like, studies show when kids get physically active either prior to or during learning, it helps improve focus and retention. Some of the stuff I had to get in the trenches and learn myself. But so she started using healthy hip hop to start their day. And she was able to bring that time down from like seven, eight minutes to like, under a minute because yeah. they was excited to do healthy hip hop. And then she was able to transition that into her lesson plan. So, wow, That's amazing. man, I love that. I love that. It's, it's full circle. You know, it started with your kid and now it's, it's, it's having an impact on kids nationally. Right. And so as we, as we get ready, Roy, I, I would love to hear, man, are there any ways or resources, tips even that you would leave for our listeners who may be, looking for resources or tips or practices even maybe maybe we can leave it there practices as a as a as a faith man of faith and an entrepreneur in the music space are there any rhythms you know tools of the titans right. that that you rely on to continue to to go yeah i think really it's the it breaks down to just some real simple fundamentals of like for me starting my day with the word i'm doing my best to try to end it with the word now like starting really like intentional with scripture intentional with like study and prayer and like having that foundation and then once i can start on that foundation because what i what i realize is even when because even raising a million dollars like some of us when we come from that's a whole lot of money, lot of money. But in they game in this game there's really no, not no money to them yeah. right so but even that what I, I figured out is i started getting more and bringing more in, I thought I was going, no, my anxiety went higher. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like my, my mental health was suffering more. Like my spirit, I was getting attacked more. So I realized God was showing me like, it, it was always, he was my peace. Like it was never going to be the amount of money I made. I thought at one point it was never going to be like improving my family's lifestyle. The, the peace was always just Man. in him. Like it wasn't in nothing else. And so I would say them simple fundamentals of like starting your day in the scripture and then just really just applying it. Cause the application, cause like that's another reason we talked on too long, a little bit over, but uh, like with my pops, like when we was younger, like, like I said, we, we weren't as close when he as older, he's a, he's a witness. Right. But I'm like, and again, no judgment, love him. I'm like, listen, man, all that knowledge of the word and all this cool words, application, no family. Like, yeah. I need to see it. Like, I mean, I want to, I want to be that. I want to be the applicant. I want to be the life you can look at. Okay, well, uh, okay, yeah. he's saying yeah. it. And he's actually doing it. So, he's living it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, man, praise God. It, it's been so, so cool to sit with you and, and, and get to know your journey. Where can, where can folks find out more about healthy hip hop? Uh, just all the socials is just healthy dot hip hop or just healthy hip hop one word. Um, download the mobile application. It's free. Uh, 
all kind of playlists and stuff for kids. You can do it on, and even create these TikTok style videos, but in a safer environment for kids. So wow. starting to onboard actually some influencers I here in uh, Atlanta influencers. Yep. So everything is just healthy hip hop. Or Roy Scott, yeah. our CEO. Yep. All right, JoJo, we're gonna get on some healthy hip hop tonight. Yo, show Lucas, yeah. you know, <laughs> get into it. Well, thank you so much. And for those who are just tuning in, my name is Marcus. I'm one of your co-hosts with my good friend Ace Harris, and this is the One One Six Life on Sirius XM Channel One Five Four. Holy Culture Radio. We'll see y'all next week.